This is part 10 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to monitor and react when a form control or a form group value changes. In our previous videos in this course, we already discussed that to create a reactive form, we create instances of form group and form control classes. Both these classes derive from the base abstract control class and this class exposes a property called value changes. Since both form group and form control classes inherit from abstract control class, this value changes property is also available on both these class instances that is form group and form control. This value changes property is an observable that emits an event every time the value of a form group or form control changes. Now for us to be able to monitor and react when the form group or form control value changes, we obviously have to subscribe to the value changes observable by using its subscribe method. Notice in this example, we are using the get method to get a reference to this full name form control that is present inside this form group employee form. Once we have a reference to that full name form control, we are using the value changes property and subscribing to its observable using the subscribe method. Now since we are subscribed to the observable, every time the value of the full name form control changes, either programmatically or in the UI, that changed value gets passed to the subscribe method. And then this anonymous function that we have specified right here as a parameter will get executed. And if you notice what we are doing here, we are logging that value to the console. So every time the value of the full name form control changes, it gets logged to the console. So let's look at this in action. At the moment, we are in create employee component class. We have our employee form, form group right here. Within that, our full name form control is present. So we want to start monitoring changes to this full name form control as soon as this create employee component is initialized. So within ng on a net, after our form group, its form controls and nested form groups are created, we want to subscribe to value changes observable of full name form control. To get a reference to full name form control, let's use the get method on employee form form group. And to this method, we pass the name of our full name form control, which is full name. On the reference, we have value changes property, which is an observable. So we use the subscribe method to subscribe to the observable. Since we are subscribed, every time the value of the full name form control changes, that value gets passed to this method. And then we can specify an anonymous function here, which gets executed every time the value of the form control changes. In our case, let's simply log it to console. Let's first launch browser developer tools. Notice now, as the full name form control value changes, that value gets logged to the browser console. Now, instead of logging the value to the browser console, let's look at another use case for this monitoring technique. Now, here is what we want to do. As we type into this full name form control, we want to display the number of characters that we have typed so far in a label right here. First, in the component class, let's include a property. I'm going to name this full name length. Let's initialize this to zero. We're going to use this property to keep track of the number of characters that we have typed in our full name form control. And the UI is also going to bind to this property. So in the template, next to the full name form field, let's include a label and use interpolation to bind to the property in our component class. Now all that is left to do is populate this full name length property with the number of characters that we have typed in our full name form control. We know as the value in this full name form control changes, that value gets passed to the subscribe method as a parameter. Now notice when I hover the mouse over this parameter, the type is any, but we know we are dealing with full name form control and the value that we type into this form control is going to be string. So let's explicitly specify the type for the value parameter here as string. To get the number of characters that we have typed so far, use length property on this value parameter. And then we are going to set this as the value for this full name length property. Now 
Notice on the initial page load, the character count is zero, but as we start to type, the counter changes as expected. Now we already know this form group class also inherit from abstract control class. This means this value changes property is also available from the form group class. We have just seen what happens when we subscribe to value changes property of a form control. Now let's see what happens when we subscribe to value changes property of a form group. At the moment, in our form, we have got two form groups. This is our root form group, and here we have our skills nested form group. We can subscribe to value changes property of either the root form group or the nested form group. First, let's do it for the root form group. Now, since we already have a reference to our root form group employee form, we don't have to use this get method. And let's change the type of this value parameter to its default type, which is any, and then convert the value to a string using json.stringify. To this method, let's pass our value parameter and then log this to the browser console. Notice now when any of the form control value changes, the entire root form group value will be logged to the browser console. Notice when we change the full name form control value, the entire form group value is logged, including the nested form group value. Notice again when we change the proficiency form control to intermediate, again the entire form group value is logged to the browser console. Now, if your requirement is to be notified only if any of the control values in this nested form group changes, then subscribe to the value changes property of this nested form group. And the way we do that is by using get method on our root form group and then specify the name of the nested form group, which is skills. Notice now when the full name form control value changes, we don't get any notification. But when any of the skill related field value changes, the entire nested form group value is logged to the browser console. Now we don't need this code here. I just included it for demonstration. So let's delete that. And in the view template, we also don't need this label. So subscribing to value changes observable and thereby monitoring a form group or form control allows us to do several things like implementing autocomplete feature and dynamically validating form groups and form controls. Also, at the moment, within our create employee component, all the validation messages and the logic to show and hide them is in the view template. By subscribing to this value changes observable, we can very easily move all of that into the component class. We'll discuss how to do that in our upcoming videos. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.